Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. For the first time ever, Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Centre opened its doors to a television crew. This is our house. You're a visitor. Given incredible access to this uniquely female space... Can you back up for me, please? ..that is home to some of America's most dangerous women. All I can see is my whole hand filled with blood. Girl got her eyes beat. When someone swings first, win the fight. Charged with everything from drug trafficking, armed robbery, gang violence and even murder. <laughs> Our cameras captured every shocking and sometimes surprising moment of life behind bars. But jail life can be explosive and every day can be a battle to stay safe. Do you feel like you're going to harm yourself? Oh, my God. When good girls go bad, anything can happen. This is fucking... Despite constant surveillance and supervision, the officers of Western Massachusetts Regional Women's Correctional Center aren't always aware when someone breaks the rules. Sometimes they have to rely on informants. There are rumours an inmate is running a store in the unit and someone has snitched to the guards, even if they didn't mean to. You heard about what happened over here? Oh, yeah, I heard. It's crazy. One of the girls was like, oh, I ain't got nothing to do with the store. Straight up, like, dry snitch. Dry snitching is when an inmate would tell on somebody by mistake, not really wanting to say nothing. It could be a conversation they're having, and then all of a sudden they, they just say what they're not supposed to be saying. And, you know, if we're walking around and we hear it, you know, then we can be like, oh, what happened? So that's, that's like a little definition of dry snitching. She was like, oh, I ain't got nothing to do with the store. Who the fuck is Karen? Yeah. She's a youngin' over here. She's like 19, 20. Yo, you be sick. Yeah. Yo, she was doing bad good, too. I'm fucking... She I'm was. Sick. I looked at Carmona. I was like, Carmona, you know this shit ain't right, right? I'm like, she shouldn't be going to the hall over some bullshit. Like, it's all hearsay anyways. I'm like, there's no store in this unit. The officers, acting on information from the dry snitch, have heard that an inmate in 2B has bought some items from a store. It's all they need to investigate further. Hello, Miss Silva. So you know I'm going to be moving you to segregation, correct? Huh? You're being moved PhD, no press pending investigation. Come over here, turn around, put your hands behind your back. Right against the door, don't make any sort of movements, OK? Don't move. Okay, stand still. We're gonna put you against our wall. What the officers are gonna do, they're gonna do your passage. Make sure you don't have anything on your person. Just stand still and listen to what they're gonna tell you, okay? Hi, my name's Jackie, I'm an addict. <laughs> I am 48 years old, and I have been in and out of this jail probably six times. You know, my criminal behavior started at a late age. The case that I got sentenced on, I was charged with shoplifting, third offense, which they could have given me up to six months for, but they gave me 30 days. I'm a hustler. I'm a booster. You know, going in Home Depot, walking out with half the store. That's what boosting is. <laughs> it was the thrill of the chase. The, you know, every day you had to do something different to come up with the money you need to make to feed your addiction. And, and my addiction was huge. You know, like most people, you know, two or three bags a day. I was doing two or three bundles a day, which is 30 bags. Heroin. Good heroin. 
So how long does this investigation take? Well, 72 hours. So okay. I can do your investigation. I put twenty dollars on someone's account for ten dollars worth of stuff. Not even food or coffee, just hygiene products. It can happen where if I sell you a Snickers bar, then you owe me two or three of them next commissary day. Or, okay, I'm gonna give you, um, you know, body lotion, I'm gonna give you hair product, and then, you know, they're like $10 worth, but you gotta put in my account, you gotta have somebody put in my account, you know, $20, $30. She does know all the rules, she does. Um, even though she questions them, even though she questions every single rule, she's been here and she knows what, you know, what we do on a daily basis. Everybody plays the game. What I did, I wasn't hurting anybody. Missy is awaiting trial for aggravated home invasion with a weapon. This is actually the first time I've ever been to jail and I'm 36 years old. I did a home invasion and a kidnapping and um, assault and battery with a firearm. We got caught because my co-defendant left her resume in the bathroom. Yeah, it's probably the dumbest thing a criminal could do. <laughs> um, she left her resume there because she was having a job interview that day. Missy's serious crime usually carries a lengthy sentence, but she's hoping the fact that it's a first offence carried out due to her addiction will mean she receives a lighter one. The worst my lawyer said is 10 years but because I'm dependent on drugs and I wouldn't have done the crime if I wasn't on drugs, I could do two years. Whilst awaiting trial, Missy has a unique way of ensuring she has enough cash in jail. I have um, an older man who I associate myself with. They call him sugar daddies. Tell me something. I want to know what are the rules of the game. <laughs> So I have one of those. Hi. Hi, honey. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I lived next to my sugar daddy for five years. He asked me if I needed help with the kids. So I said, yeah. Ever since then, he's been helping me. He's never said the word no. He puts 150 on my books every week. $30. Can you do 30 for me? Yeah, it was going there anyway. Thank you. Mm. Love you. Love you. If I tell him the sky is black and I need money to turn it purple, he will give it to me. He is 75, so I think he's about 40 years older than me, but he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah. He has a ton of money, though, so... Hopefully he doesn't see this. <laughs> So you already do too much. Let someone say about that, but that's all right. I'll let it go. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. <laughs> so in return for the money, it's companionship, spending time. <laughs> and funny. He wants to walk around with eye candy on his arm, so it works. I'm one of the lucky ones, though. Usually you have to do sexual favors. Not me. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, boy. That's like doing it with my grandfather. <laughs> That's <not> good. <laughs> uh, we kiss. <laughs> that we do. That's not bad. He might do some things to me, but we don't have sex and I don't have to do anything to him. It is kind of weird having him do things, sexual favors to me, but it's not for me, it's really for him. <laughs> and then if we were to get married, I'd probably get about 4,000 a month from pension and then his social security check. So that works. <laughs> yeah. I want one of those. You told me you didn't like boats. Yes, I do. When I said I wanted to buy a boat, you said I don't like boats. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You get seasick at first, but I like them. Well, I don't get seasick, but I can make you get seasick. <laughs> I tell him I love him. I do love him. If anything were to happen to him, I'd be super sad. But I also think that I'd be set for the rest of my life, so. 
Love you. Bye, baby. Twenty-four-year-old Franklin, awaiting trial for armed robbery, met convicted inmate Leslie in a prison class and believes he's found the love of his life. Yo, she is the definition of it. Oh my God, thank you, Jesus. I'm like, beep, pew, be the first one in class. Yeah, I, I heard about that too. Franklin catches up with his best friend Cash, who's been held in segregation for fighting. Locked up for more than 22 hours a day, he's missed all the drama in Franklin's love life. All right, so come in. Yo, so this Leslie. Oh against the green. God. This oh, is the one in what? Two B. Two B. Yo, she's in my fucking um. Transitions. Oh my God. Is she the tall white one? Nah, she's Spanish. Oh, she's curly ass hair. He has gained a lot of attention, and I am definitely happy that he came because before that it was focused on me, and I think that's how the fight had happened. And when I saw him, I was like, yes, he's good looking too. And every, all the attention, well, most of the attention, um, is now focused on Franklin because he's the new set on the pod. Yo, she's bad, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. She's the best looking bitch in here by far, bro. I don't care. A stud is, um, you know, someone like me. Um, we dress like men. It, you know, back in the day, they'd be called like a butch or a dyke. I, I'd say the proper word is stud. Or um, maybe some people call it transgender, I don't know. Older and wiser, Cash has a more cautious approach to keeping on the right side of prison when it comes to relationships. Franklin's taken over the new role, which is good for me. But um, he's not being too smart about it. <laughs> he's gonna wind up in a hole, I think. I why would you try to be with a female in jail? Nah, nah, listen, I was trying to get out on the brace. <laughs> That's why, I, I don't know. I just be minding my business. In segregation, correctional caseworker Carmona is investigating Jackie for allegedly attempting to buy products from an illegal prison store. So an officer caught her in the unit talking to a friend put it to, to put money in, in somebody else's account. With, and she had the information of that other inmate. So that's how we started. Is she found guilty? She's gonna serve time here. Ready? Where are we going? To my, to the office. Right, down the hall, right? Right here. Let's go. Pop, seven. Yeah, we'll do it over there. Yeah, we'll grab you so you don't fall. Have a seat right there. All right. So tell me about this. Twenty dollars. I put $20 on her account because she was leaving for Mill Street to buy the rest of her stuff because I have nothing because my account was frozen and they couldn't freeze it in time and I'm sick and I'm hungry. All right. But you know you couldn't do that, right? Yeah, but everybody else is doing it in there. Okay. And what do you mean you can't do that? Let me see in the rule book where it says my sister can't put money on someone's account. My own money. You can't. You can borrow. You can lend. You can do any of that and you know that. Never uh, heard of anybody being brought to the hole for this and I shouldn't be here right now. I didn't hurt anybody, I didn't fight, I didn't cause a disturbance. How much time does each of these charges carry? You can be here for three to 20 days. The worst part that can happen with running a store, we, we gotta um, prevent from other girls as well trying to pimp other girls, you know? Oh, you owe me this, so when you go out on the streets, I need you to work for me to pay your debt. Where it just doesn't end just here in, in the jail, it, it can go away from these walls into the community. You know, if, 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 if I gave you $100 of commissary and you owe me $100, and you now, now I can say, now you work for me when you're outside of these walls. 
You see, so you see how twenty dollars can can be that bad. Get me out of here. I don't have. I'm not. I'm not gonna make that call because I used to do the investigation, the initial investigation. That's what I do. I was angry. I was frustrated. It was bullshit. I did not think I deserved to be logged into the hole over putting twenty dollars on someone's account. It's ridiculous, and and it's still happening in the pod. There's still ten, twelve girls putting money on other accounts, and ain't nobody being logged. Oh well, you know what I mean. I guess I'm just their their little example. I don't know. And they can't serve vegetarian soup with beef broth in it. Okay. Well, I don't work in the kitchen, but we'll let them know. Let them know, cause. Jackie will now have to wait for her disciplinary board, or D board, to find out how long she has to spend in segregation, where she could be locked up for up to 23 hours a day. Over the last week, Franklin and Leslie's romance has blossomed and they've been writing letters to each other. These are all the letters Franklin wrote to me. The person I'm crazy over is you. Trust me, you don't have nothing to worry about. I promise you, baby. It sounds like you've been through rough times with the people you dealt with. But baby, I promise you better though. If there's a question of my heart, you got it. Hey, babe, it's like almost 9 o'clock and I'm tired as fuck already. But for some reason, I can't think, I can't take my mind off of you. Like, I wrote you about two letters already, both five pages, five pages long, and still seem like I can write to you all night. As they're in separate pods, they can't take their relationship much further. It's only in transitions class that they can act like a couple to any extent, which still carries a risk of a Priya charge. She's definitely frustrating, like not being able to touch her and kiss her like when I want, but I feel like that's, it's, it's only gonna help us, like, and it's gonna build us to grow stronger. They write letters back and forth all the time. Franklin wears a floss loop around his hand to say that he's taken. Sometimes they even risk holding hands under the table. I hold her hand only when certain instructors are on it. They ain't gonna get you, so. <laughs> to me, like, nothing else matters now but Leslie. Like, I don't see anybody in my view but her. So, like, everybody that try to, like, spit game to me now or, like, try to come on to me, it's just like, I'm good, like, back off. Like, I got mine, we're good, that's it. I mean, some days it's like, damn, like, I wish I could just give her a hug, like, when she's feeling down and stuff like that, but, like, we, we sneak it in once in a while. Like, you just gotta know when to do it, you know? That's my wife, that's it, and <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Missing home after a visit with her sugar daddy, Missy calls her kids. Hi. My four-year-old has autism, so he can't talk to me. When I call my dad to see how he's doing, you know, he understands what people are saying when they tell him what to do, but I don't think he understands me telling him I love him, and he can't say it back, so that's rough. Good, how was the first couple days of school? Um, my 15-year-old, he knows what's going on. He's not a dummy. It sucks to be able to tell him that his mom is addicted to drugs and why I needed them, because my body depended on them. That was the hardest thing I ever had to do. I hope you're doing okay, baby. I wish I was there to help take care of you. I have a five-month-old that I can't hold and I never bonded with. My newborn doesn't know who I am. I miss her so much. Missy hopes she'll see her kids sooner rather than later as her lawyer has led her to believe she might be looking at a short sentence. He told me, like, maybe last month it would be two and a half, and we're going to find out when my co-defendant is sentenced. So hopefully I don't get as much time as her. I feel bad 
I think about it, I dream about it. Um, I worry about my kids. They have to Google me and see. The crime that I did was very horrible. It's one of the worst crimes you can do because people die in home invasions and people are killed. So I'm ashamed, pretty much. <laughs> Time is still moving forward while you're at a standstill, and that's the worst part. Your kids are growing up, and you're just sitting here, rotting. <laughs> Bye, honey. Love. Despite awaiting trial, a trip to the prison hairdresser still affords Franklin and Cash the opportunity to catch up on celebrity gossip. She looks so old now, huh? Nicole Kidman? Nicole and Keith? They're together? Yeah, well, they, it looks like they are. Oh, they were married, too. They're getting um, divorced. divorced. My real name is Kristen Ekman. My mom calls me Chris, but um, my friends here call me Cash. I sell drugs, and that's what someone nicknamed me, actually. I thought it was kind of cool. So it stuck. Nice, nice, nice. Um, 38 years old. I was born uh, June 10th, 1980. I'm a Gemini, so. We're really, really nice people until you really piss us off. <laughs> I started when I was 14 smoking weed, drinking alcohol. Uh, when I was 19, I did some ecstasy. I was 21 when I was started doing cocaine. 23 when I got into the pills. Every time I couldn't get pills, I would grab heroin. So that's how I started. <clears throat> Thank you. She did not fade my hair whatsoever. No, it looks a hot mess. Just like Franklin, Cash also found love in jail. And more than gay for the stay, his relationship flourished on the outside. Me and my fiance, um, we met actually in jail. She came in and I was sitting there and I saw her and I just smiled. And um, she was like, can you help me with my bags. <laughs> so I just picked up her bags and, you know, walked into her room. And we just started talking from there. And we ended up dating. I knew she was the one, basically from the way I felt, she just made me happy. When I went home, I left first. I waited a year and a half and I never cheated. I didn't want to. I loved her. Throughout their four-year relationship, Cash kept clean and out of jail. But then his fiancée became fatally ill. She went to the hospital um, for pneumonia. They came over to me and they said, listen, we got to take her to the intensive care unit. And I said, OK, well, do whatever you got to do. And I said, can I come? When I went to go into where she was, they close the curtain in my face. Some woman, and she said, um, we need 30 minutes alone with her. I yelled through the curtain that I loved her, and she said, I love you. And that was the last time I heard her voice. I relapsed when I started selling drugs. And it only took a year, and now I'm back here. You know, I was doing so good. She would want me to um, do what I'm doing, get my shit together.
Over the last two weeks, the inmates in 3B have frequently been locked up for up to 23 hours a day. Recently, I've had to lock the women in 3B down a couple of times due to their behavior. A lot of them aren't listening to staff directives when they're told to lock in, they're being loud. That means shut the door! Whilst many of the inmates get annoyed by lockdown... I've never been to a jail in my life that locks us down over, like, petty shit. One prisoner in particular is finding it overwhelming. That is for sure. What I'm here right now for is to know if you feel safe or if you feel like you're going to harm yourself. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to need you to have a seat in the day room. Okay. Don't forget to enter 6942, please. Hi, I'd rather be safe. Hi, I have a Geraldine Willis. Miss Willis is not contracting for safety. I've asked her all the questions. Do you feel safe? Do you feel like you're going to harm yourself? She's a wreck in tears, just saying that she doesn't know if she'll hurt herself or not. All right, thank you, bye. You know, it makes you uneasy when you have to report something like this, because you do feel for them. You know they're going through it. You know you wish there's something you could do to help. However, at the end of the day, this is our protocol. We're doing it to keep them safe. Due to statements that she made, they're usually moved on risk status just for their safety in case whether they're having a bad day, a bad hour, sometimes it just helps for a timeout away from all the stress that population brings them. It's always a tough situation when something like this happens. Right now, Lieutenant Sherrard is moving Miss Willis to the special management unit. We believe that this is just her inability to deal with the unit bin lock. The unit bin locked quite frequently the past two weeks. But anytime someone make a comment regarding their safety, we treat it as if everyone has a potential to carry out that comment. We put them on a risk status. As you can see, we take their clothing, we put them in a safety smock. It's a tear proof, bite proof smock. Here you go. Is she dressed? Yes. Okay. Miss Willis, I know. I explained to her that the move was for her safety, the restraints were for her safety, and then tomorrow morning when our forensic staff come in, they will meet with her and do a, a, a more um, detailed assessment to determine whether or not there's true risk at, at this point. Jackie is also in segregation while she awaits the outcome of an investigation into her alleged breaking of prison rules. Miss Silver, how you doing? You remember me, right? All right, health stinks. I'm gonna pull you out to uh, do your D-board, all right? All right, kiddo, ready? Yep. A D-board will decide whether Jackie is guilty of getting her sister to add money to the account of a fellow inmate. Sorry about our first uh, meeting here this uh, month. Well, this meets our second time. Yeah, no, I know, but last time was bad when I was detoxing. So this is a D-board for an incident that happened on the 14th. So you pled guilty to violations to rules. I'm going to find you guilty. Um, you pled guilty to disruptive behavior. I'm going to find you guilty and conspiracy because it was planned. It's the 10 days for violation and five days for interfering with staff member duties. That's a lot of days. 
as long as you participate in the accountability program with Peach, you could qualify for step down. All right. You can appeal my decision at any time. Okay, just I don't think I need to be in here. Yeah. You've been here so many times, you know the rules. Yeah, and, I'm, and I don't come to 1B. You know that. You know what I mean? I don't. This is your second time here. <laughs> in how long? <laughs> uh, a week. All right. Found guilty, Jackie must complete 15 days in segregation. Misdemeanors may be punished, but at WCC there's also place for reform. Franklin goes to see his counsellor Liz to discuss what may have led to his criminal behaviour. How would you describe the family you grew up in? I always like had everything I needed, like necessity and stuff, but like I don't feel like once I got to like a certain age and I like came out about my sexuality, like I feel like me and my parents like like parted, like split kind of because mm. they didn't like really agree with my decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I came out to my mom to tell her that I was lesbian and she did not take that really good. I had a lot of anger, sadness, like a lot of emotions built up in me that I didn't know how to release in the right form. So I, that's when I just started committing crimes. How old were you when you? 13. Oh, wow. That's tough. You didn't mm -hmm. really have that it was. emotional support, especially, yeah. especially 13. Yeah, going for like that still, yeah like exactly. That's a tough time yeah. aside from. Right. Yeah. OK. How, how are things now? Everything is rekindled. Like, right. it took a while. It, it took a while. Like, my mom just got over it maybe when I was, like, 20, 21. Mm -hmm. And also my dad. And, like, me and my dad are, like, we work more on our relationship because, like, he's it's been such a gap in my life where he's been absent. My dad was out of the picture because he was always incarcerated. And so... At a point in time, I got like so defiant, and I like I was missing my dad, so I began to run away. I just don't think like he understands the pain that I went through, like without him being there, and then without them, both of my parents accepting me for who I really am, you know. So, having assessed his background, Liz can sign Franklin up for classes designed to prevent him from reoffending. What were you thinking? Victim impact. All right, I'll come by later with your service plan. Okay. Now we add a bunch of stuff. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Less positive about the future, Missy is worried about life on the outside. Needing advice, she seeks out her cellmate, Irma. Let's just hope I don't do any more drugs. Told them you're not. If they don't want to give me my kids, I am. When you decide that you want to be clean, you have to, that has to be up to you. You can't be forced to be clean. Coming to jail forces you to be clean. Can I say I'm going to be clean when I leave here? Probably not, because I'm, they don't want to give me my kids. No, yes, Melissa, I no, am. you don't need to do it, man. You don't. I have a three-year-old. You have a four-year-old. He has autism. Oh. He can't talk. He, you know, he needs you, Melissa. I don't care. Go yeah, to but, the fucking sky and be on. But if they don't want to give him back, then what? If they don't want to give him my kids, there's really no sense in me staying clean, even though they say, you know, you have to want to be clean for yourself. When you're a woman and have children, you really want to be clean for your kids also. Try first. Yeah, and if I don't succeed, then yeah. I will be doing drugs. They don't That's care. That's an excuse, Melissa. It's a good one. Because they still are with your dad and you still can see them seven days a week, all the time. It's not the same and you know it. Irma tries to give me advice, but she doesn't understand. Her choice of drug is different. She likes to drink. I don't want to drink. I want to get high. My kids get me high, so that's my, like, natural high. And if I can't have that, then I'm going to go back to drugs, unfortunately. 
I'm going to try not to, but it's not. If I'm not going to get them, it's not going to be easy. At the end of the day, those are still your babies. You still got to stay strong for them, Alyssa. And my scars aren't that bad no more. They're getting better. I just don't want them to be there no more. It's like a reminder of how oh. freaking good it feels, really. If you don't see your kids as a woman, you want to numb that pain from not being able to see them grow up and develop and just talk to them and see them and grow with them. If I um, stay clean and I get my kids back, I can go back to my life I had before I was getting high. My own car, my own place to live, um, you know, doing homework and cooking dinner for my kids every night. I miss that stuff. You miss those things, the little things you miss that you don't realize. Taking them to the park and just watching them when they're not watching. That's the best part. Having struggled with being locked up for extended periods, Geraldine spent 24 hours in the special management unit where she was assessed by the mental health team. So Geraldine has come back to the unit. She is a whole new person. She kind of just got the time out that she needed, kind of reset herself and you know she's ready to get back on track she's always in good spirits now every morning says good morning how are you you know she'll go around and talk to all the other inmates in the pod so she's doing really well currently in WCC it's not just the prison officers who look out for the welfare of the inmates I happen to be standing at my door and I looked over and um, Geraldine I seen her eating out of her blue cup and I just felt so bad. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give her a bowl. All right. All right, good, because I'm gonna probably run out of cream. Basically, I just try to help in any way I can. To make them happy, it makes me happy, because it's genuine happiness, and you really can't find that here. It's hard, you know what I mean? Like, I know when I came in, and the little bit of stuff that was offered to me, like, I was thankful for. So, you kind of, me, I like to look out for people. Here. Come to me, come to the cream girl. Do I need a coffee? I'm gonna put coffee. You want coffee too? Do you have a cup? All right. Um, you like two sugars? Yeah. All right, cool. We love Having relapsed into heroin addiction following the death of his fiance, Cash is determined this will be his last time in jail. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you don't. I like myself enough to I'm confident. I don't care. I feel like I'm a grown up now. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's best uh, That's my best song. Uh, mm -hmm. I will take a million dollars for that. Aw, uh, thank you. I just want to be happy. I want a family on my own. Here, you're welcome. And get married and just have a really good job. And just live a normal, happy life, you know? Nothing, nothing crazy. Heroin addict Missy is a waiting trial charged with armed robbery, kidnapping, assault and battery, and a home invasion. She has a case meeting prior to court. The meeting with my attorney was kind of shell-shocking. He said 20 years, that the DA's asking for 20 years, so I wasn't really expecting that. The victim was an elderly woman who was tied up and held at gunpoint. He said that tomorrow we're going to be going in and the victim's going to be speaking and that usually hurts your case a lot because she's an older woman and she's going to be crying and upset about what happened to her because she has to relive that. I feel so bad already for what I did to her. She, you're supposed to feel safe in your home and I made her not feel safe so I know she didn't go back home for a while after it happened, and I don't blame her. I probably would never want to go back. All right, guys. 
So what happened? I sit down and I'm like, so what's up? He's like, they're asking for 20. I'm like, what, 20 years? I'm like, are you serious? He's like, that's like the most. And I'm like, no freaking way. I don't want to do that. That's what the DA wants. That doesn't mean that's what you're going to get. It's yep. up, the last thing is up to the judge. You've only want. been here a year. I've been here too. So you're going to sit here for a little while and don't rush. There's consequences to our choices. And then we have to understand the power of addiction, which got you here. She's really a good person. She's really caring. She wears her heart outside, you know, on her, her pocket. Like, she cares. But I'm just being honest. I don't want her to do a lot of time, but I'm hoping that the, um, the system sees that she definitely needs a program in like six months to a year. Now that's something you need to deal with your lawyer. I'm hoping to not get 20 years. I'm just hoping to be reunited with my kids and do what I have to do and keep my mind focused on serving the time I have to serve. The hardest part is going to be telling my family how long I have to do. It's going to be hard. Coming towards the end of her 30-day sentence for shoplifting, Jackie, in segregation, is using her remaining time to reflect. When I came in here, I almost died detoxing. I was detoxing so hard. Whether or not I'm in population or I'm in the hole for no reason, I'm still not out there trying to kill myself. Do you know how many girls that have left this jail and overdosed within a week of leaving it? I could tell you over 20 since I've been in and out of here. It's, it's so sad. But these counselors, they really work hard on trying to set you up with a plan so you don't relapse. You know, putting you into a uh, halfway house, things to avoid death. So overall, you know, except for petty bullshit like I'm sitting here right now, they got a good system going, they do. Right now, it's saving my life. You have to look for the bright side. You do. Franklin is also trying to take something positive from his time at WCC and has signed up to a victim impact class. The reason why I signed up for that class is because I'm just trying to get a better perception and view on how I've impacted the victims that I have. Victim impact? Or... Yeah. When I first got walked up, I wasn't really up to doing a lot of thinking. I just was angry. I was mad that I'm even back incarcerated. I did a 15-month bid, and three weeks later, got back uh, arrested. So I was actually angry. I was just like, you know what, fuck this, whatever. Over the period of the 18 months, I definitely done a lot of thinking about the victims that I've been impacting my whole life. So sometimes you'll see in court, they have victim impact statements. It just gives the family an opportunity to express one final time before the sentencing is hand down. Uh, what how their life has been shattered due to uh, the violent crime. The armed um, robbery that I actually committed for this time for me being incarcerated, the victim actually wrote a victim impact statement in court, which that shit, it made me feel like trash. It made me feel terrible. It made me feel like, damn, like, this is not really the person who you are. I, I definitely am remorseful of what I've done. I definitely would like to reach out to my victim and let her know that, you know, I, it was never my intentions to harm her, to, you know, traumatize her, to make her feel any less of a person. I just was struggling and fighting with demons in me. I've been given so many opportunities to get my life together. I've been given so many chances by the courts to get my life together, and enough is enough. It needs to stop. You need to stop because there's no telling. I'm in the streets, carry guns, all type of things. I shoot somebody, they die. Boom, I'm in jail for murder. I'm in jail for life. Next time. No, I didn't do it. They hit me with first degree murder. This is fucking. Oh my God, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs>